Hey guys, I'm so I'm back. I had to come back the next day. But I wanted to continue the conversation with you guys on finding a job down here once you move. So if you looked at my previous looked at my previous videos, you would have seen that I said to make sure you find a job before you come down here. Okay? Um, or some type of income or make sure you it's cool for a while. So <clears throat> as you can see, if you looked on Indeed, you've seen that there are plenty of jobs available in Houston. It's a lot of remote jobs available also. Okay, so if you want to do remote, you want to do remote. But people like me, like CNAs, um, anything medical, nurses or whatever, you're, you're going to have a job. Because, like, you know, Houston has one of the best, well, Texas and Houston, whatever, has one of, like, the best um listings of hospitals or like if you're in a specialty or whatever that case is um so if you are a cna or nursing or nurse rn or any type of medical make sure you get your license transferred before you move um that is essential to do um I know I'm not sure how much it is for nurses, but I know CNAs was $25. The process was really easy. Um, with Merlin, I went to the Merlin Board of Nursing, filled out a paper. It was like a verification of employment or something. You had to have been working um, at least 24 hours within transferring. That's all you need, basically, a day. Just to say that you used your certification, home care, anything revol revolving you using your license, your certification or whatever is considered time and you can use that for the verification to get your license or <clears throat> certification switched over so that's that um and of course if you're doing traveling cna or nursing then that's cool too and um like i said it's plenty it's plenty 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 of medical jobs down here even if you want to do like well patient access things of that nature it's a little pro it's a little wait for that but you can still apply so if you're thinking about moving say 2023 or the end of 2022 it is january so that gives you like six months almost a year six to 12 months just to get everything situated so that means that if you are transferring like a license or anything then you need to be doing it like now um like getting everything together if you're not working in the CNA field just to um maybe just do some home care or if you know somebody that has assistant living something of, in that nature then do it but i always say if you have any certifications pharmacy tech for biotomy anything make sure you transfer it over before going to another state it's less of a hassle um another thing make sure you have all your documents from vital records or whatever state you're coming from your birth certificate um like the original document birth certificate because you will need it um and it saves the hassle of getting things mailed and all you know anything you might need it for your social security card um anything you know anything like legal documents just make sure you have them before you move down here um um and if like say you're getting like a like i mentioned previous like the store jobs and things like that most of the time they just want to have your social social security card for the i9 documents so just make sure you have those things with you um well, like i said the job market down here is like flourishing like because texas is they been open i don't even know they probably closed like a good month compared to everybody else but they've been moving around like a lot of businesses closed but they opened back up once you know they got their loans and they was able to fund but everything is hiring down here like everything and they and just because the cost of living is cheap don't assume that they pay less let me tell you so when i first came i did some cna work at a hospital and i did it at um like a home care assistant living the cna work at the hospital right i was working on a uh, med search floor which is like basically kind of like the main floor any cna will probably work on if they doing cna work at a hospital um and they paid me 18 right that's cool that was well it was 17 but the nighttime differential got a dollar 
an hour. So that's $18 an hour working three days, 12 hour shifts. You already know that, right? So I had to think about like, I'm in Baltimore. They pay, the most I ever made is the CNA is $15 an hour paying $1,500 rent, right? I came down here. My rent is like about the same, but my if, if you look at some of my other videos, you'll see that my apartment is really spacious. My apartment was half of that size in Baltimore, and I was making less. But when I came here, making $18, I, you know, I had the apartment. But I'm going to go back. So when I was working at the hospital, I had a house, right, um, for my transitional house. But I was living there too when I first moved down. It was a four bedroom house, uh, one and a half bath, a full backyard, a backyard big enough to put a sh like two tiny houses back there if I wanted to. It's so big. Um, and a two car garage and I had a front yard. Only paid twelve seventy five, right? And that was on that was Southwest, um, um, on Post Oak. And I if I look if you look at any of my other videos, all my neighbors was Mexicans. And it was cool. It was cool around there. I just didn't like the stray dogs. Houston is known for stray dogs. Just be aware. Um, and I paid twelve seventy five, making eighteen dollars an hour. Okay. So <clears throat> when I got my apartment, which I am, which I'm, which I'm in now, um, that's what I'm paying the fourteen, fourteen fifty because I have my water is included, and I have a storage unit. But the rent is only like 13, 13 30 or something like that. But once I add everything, it's like, it comes like $1,500. The storage unit, my water, my rent is insurance. Because in Houston, due to them, like, with that with that snowstorm, I never was really the type of person to really pay my rent as insurance. But in Houston, I make sure I pay my shit. So I pay like $24 or something like that. And I have a Sherian, which covers um, me not working. If I lose a job or something, they help pay your rent or whatever. So, I pay, what, $1,500 a month, basically. And with a with $18 salary. So, I'm still banking out. So, you know, just kind of, when you're looking for a place to stay, um... Like I said, um, if you look at any of my other videos, I am helping people. So just DM me and let me know what area you was looking at. And I'll let you know if it's a go or not. And if you need some instructions or whatever, we can talk from there and see how, you know, talk about that. But um, looking for a job, it's, it's not going to be hard. Long as you, first, what you need to do is on your resume, right? No matter what you're doing on your resume, will you have removed the objective, the objective or the mission statement or whatever? Take that off. That's so like played out old school. Um, take your address off, right? So just have your name, first and last name, right? The next line you gonna have your phone number, and then the next line is gonna say Houston, Texas. Even though you're not in Houston, Texas at the moment, put Houston, Texas, okay? And then tailor your resume to match whatever job you want to get. Meaning, I'm not saying like lie on your resume like a lot, but just tailor it. Like if you working at freaking, I don't know, the IRS, they don't want to see you. The only jobs I had was at Whataburger and I only talked to customers through a box or whatever. I'm just saying. Is example. So just make sure if you say you work at Whataburger, then say like, um, I, I don't know, I perform customer service, um, efficient customer service skills. Um, I satisfied and I resolve customer um, conflicts. Some some things like that. Just change up the wording to make sure that whatever the job is listed for the skills or. The description make sure that your resume at least have 10 to 20 of those words on your resume 
So when they filtering them, your stuff up, your if your resume will pop up. So that's just a little hint, um, or a little guidance or whatever when looking for a job in Houston. Take your address off. That's the main thing. They want to know if you're doing like an in-person job. They want to know how far you're living from the, the job if you're able to get there, and um, and be mindful of where you're applying to. Because, like I tell you all the time, Houston is not a place for a person to not have a car if you're going to be moving here. Because public transportation does not go everywhere. The lift is expensive. Um, and you need to figure out a way to get around. So, with that being said, make sure that you have or you found a job that is close to where you live i can't close to where you live or within like 20 minutes because everywhere in houston is like 20 25 between 20 and 30 minute drive like sides of town like if you in one side of, if you in one area okay that's fine but if you go in different sides of town it's about like 20 20 to 30 minute distance between each 